Hi y'all, Mike Peace. If we got an exciting project for you today, this is really going to be a fun project. Uh, I'd seen this project, it's an emerging bowl. Uh, I'd seen this several years ago and watched a couple of demonstrations and saw an article, but it wasn't until I saw that recent demonstration by Theo Haralampu from Australia that I got excited and decided, okay, I, I can do, I'm going to do one of these. So let's get started. Generally, generally, there's there's several different approaches, but uh, this approach that uh, I got up at 5:30 a.m. to watch uh, Theo Haralampu from Australia demonstrate this, and he demonstrated a box about it like this. There's two different techniques. You can either uh, take one and turn a hemisphere on the end, and then cut it or separate it if you used. Um, paper glue uh, a glue split split paper technique uh, then when you finish you open it up and you'll have blank like this and then you wind up turning turning the bowl the other technique is you could do one off and do it this way first uh, which is the way he did it he actually turned the two bowls with a rim and then he put them together but you can see the challenge of that you're going to have a gap uh, I did not turn it first so this gap wasn't there and I held actually held these my power grip jaws uh, with maybe a touch of glue uh, out near the, the, the tip and then I turned turned the hemisphere then you wind up uh, figuring out how to chuck this and support it to turn the bowl and then you can trim back if you feel like uh, trimming back so it's it's a fun project I'm in the process of making a video on emerging bowl and I'll explain to you what I ran into. I had this mounted to this large uh, blank that I'm going to use uh, sometime down the road for a, a stool stool seat. Uh, it's somewhat punky, it's sycamore, uh, not as strong as I'd like it to be. I mounted it initially with a woodworm screw and I put a few drops of CA in there to harden the wood. Uh, but it failed on me. When I was turning the whole thing kind of came loose. It didn't come flying off but it came loose. Uh, I'm resolving that issue. I'm going to continue to use this by turning a recess and I think I'll get a stronger hole. But I guess the issue is be very cautious and a woodworm screw is a great way to hold something on the lathe. I use it a lot. But be very cautious or don't use it on spalted wood. Uh, if you've got some wood that's somewhat suspect on the strength, put lots of CA in there. But, but you may have a problem still after it dries. As you're putting this on, if you can't snug it up very tight, where it doesn't move anymore, you're going to have a problem. If you feel like you can keep on turning it, it's going to it's going to uh, strip those threads out. So with this with this approach, I have two blanks, so I've got another one to to do. One of the key things in making an emer emerging bowl is getting a perfect perfect sphere. The best way to do that is to make a a, a template that you can uh, keep checking. Uh, checking with. So to make this template you're going to go into your spindle scrap box when I tell you to keep. <laughs> Take out a scrap, uh, great for glue blocks, and you're going to, uh, it's already got a tenon on it, so put it in your chuck, face it off, make sure it's nice and, and flat. Uh, you're going to test it for, for flatness by putting a ruler up against it. And then we're going to take a thin scrap of uh, plywood or MDF. Uh, first we're going to take this scrap down to about 40% of the inner diameter for your, for your template. Draw, uh, draw your circle for the, the dimensions on this scrap of about 3 16th inch uh, plywood or, or MDF. We're going to glue that. I use a little uh, medium glue and I spray some accelerator on the uh, back of this. Bring up tailstock support and just let it dry for, for a few moments. And then we're going to cut it away and then cut it from corner to corner. So now that it's glue is cured, I'm going to come after it. Then I'm going to switch to a 1 8 inch parting tool and actually cut between those, those lines. And I'm going to keep parting it off until, until that scrap uh, frees up. And then we're going to use that piece in the middle. We're going to clean that up a little bit and, and actually use that for the template for the inside uh, bowl. And we'll use the, the other part for the outside diameter and, and use this part for the inside. So you might want to clean this up a little bit, put a little, uh, touch it up a little bit with sandpaper. 
Also, when you go to turning the inside, uh, you can take the ins inside of this, this template, and that gap is actually the wall of the bowl, and use that as a template to measure the inside. So we're going to take this other one, and we're going to mount it with hot glue. I've marked the center of, of this using a compass to get the, the exact uh, uh, center, and I'm going to mount this with hot glue, and I'm going to bring this up to the right place by bringing up the tailstock. I'm still waiting for the glue to melt, <laughs> paint to dry. I'm going to hold it in place for just a moment, and then we're going to uh, glue, uh, hot glue a support here because this is hanging out. It, it you won't get good results if you don't support this. There's a couple of ways to do that. The way I'm going to do it is I'm just going to glue in a little uh, scrap of of wood like this to uh, support it. For some of you experienced hot glue. Uh, users, I know this is old hat, but for those that might not have been using one for a while, make sure you use a 100 watt or, or higher, not a little craft one. But to join another uh, stick, uh, just hit a little bit there so you can just bring it up and, and join the two, and then it'll just come on in like that <laughs> once you get hot enough. Get it, get it hot enough so you can glue it to the next stick. So I've watched one of these demonstrations before and I was kind of intrigued by it. I tried it on a little small piece, did not have good success. And, and then when I saw that uh, Theo Haralampu from Australia was going to demonstrate for record power, I got up at 5.30 a.m. to watch his online dem demonstration. And one of the things, he he experimented with several different techniques and one of them for for this particular size bowl, he used a core box bit, and I thought, okay, that's a pretty neat trick. Uh, I, I found it on Amazon fairly inexpensively, and I thought, well, I could also use this for production turning for uh, some acorn boxes, so I thought I might be able to justify the, the expense, which was not real great. Uh, so that's how we're going to get a perfect sphere, a uh, hemisphere, because this is a perfect hemispheral shape. Let me really apply this into the Morse taper like that and bring that up and put on my face shield. We're not going to go faster than about 500 RPM. smooth finish. Uh, I'm happy with that. Now I've got to turn the rim. So I've got a, got a rim that looks similar to this one. Okay, this should be a fairly straightforward uh, cutting this. Uh, I want to mark this the, the rim extension here so I get a pretty good idea of what, what I'm shooting for. So now I've got it marked. I'm going to use a smaller bowl gas and Typical. This is a little 3 8 uh, I'm going to be turning some air. Um, there is another chucking technique that has some advantages to it, and that's using a support that's the same height, so you're, you're cutting in, into wood on both sides, but that's not the approach I'm using, so let's just deal with it. I'm going to turn up the speed a little bit now that I've finished uh, hollowing it, but not too, too fast, but oh. Yeah, maybe a thousand, thousand RPM. So I can see the line showing up very easily. So now I'm just going to come in.
cut up right to the line. Not going down too far. And then I'm going to sweep back. Always keep my hand on this side of the tool rest. I don't have the tool rest absolutely perpendicular, but I should. There we go. Now I can evaluate that, uh, that line. I still need to bring it over just a tiny little bit. Uh, but I'll probably come back with another uh, another tool, but I can, yeah. I need to work it on back a little bit. And now I can kind of look down the line and put my face in the line of fire and look for any balls, and the balls is right there. I'm going to try another different uh, gouge. This is another 3 8 but it's got a uh, much coarser blunter uh, cut, but I, it, it, it works great as a finishing tool, so I'm going to try that. And I think I'm going to come in from here. Come, you, you back this out, you hear the ticking. Once you quit hearing the ticking, you can just slowly advance it back. Yep, okay. Got just a little bit of cleanup there. I think I'm going to switch to a uh, detailed spindle gouge, which has got a very thick bar. And, and cut right in on that line to kind of clean that up a little bit. And sweep it back. Let's see if I can clean up that bump. Okay. I still got a little bit of a tiny little gap there. It looks clean here. I think I'll just uh, work that out with the sanding. Maybe I need to come in just a little bit deeper. I don't want to get too carried away with that. I've still got a little bulge here, so let me switch back to this one just for that area right there. And you can see it. It's here. It's between those between those lines. Very dry pumpkin wood. Probably not the best. And I think what I'm going to do, I'm going to come in with this uh, beating and parting tool and come straight in, perpendicular, and see if I can clean up that shoulder. That's cleaned up nicely. Just a touch of sanding there. I haven't torn out any of this uh, grain, so I'm I'm happy with that. Um, still got just a little bit to bring down here, and this bowl uh, is elevated about the same thickness as the rim. That's part of my design, uh, but I need to get rid of just a little bit of this. Now the challenge comes getting this off. Uh, let's see how that works. All right, I'm going to use a heat gun to uh, to warm up, and soften this uh, hot hot glue. Uh, this both of these pieces are extremely dry. I don't want to get too close. Don't want to burn the wood. But on the other hand, I don't think I've got to worry too much about wood movement. If this was green, either one of these is green, I'd be more concerned about putting too much heat because it might cause cracking. If you don't have a heat gun, hair dryer will work fine. This 1500 watt heat gun is, 
like a hair dryer on steroids and they're very inexpensive at Harbor Freight. I know I'll hear from some of you Harbor Freight haters, but I don't know where else you get a cheap uh, cheap glue gun like this. A uh, hot <laughs> heat gun. I guess I better concentrate on one area and then I'm going to use this uh, chisel and maybe maybe I'll start with a support. Up on both sides. Denatured alcohol is another approach. That's the one I would use if I was using uh, green wood. With this, this approach, you just got to take your time. Well, alright, now I've got to come in here. Where it doesn't burn anything. And take my mallet and start kind of working it down before it cools off. coming loose. There are some other uh, glue removal techniques. Some of y'all may wind up suggesting them. Uh, you can bury a piece of string underneath here that's strong enough and you tack it while you're turning it and you use that after you soften it to kind of saw through it. Uh, I probably should have tried that technique. But I haven't damaged anything. All I gotta do is uh, cut this glue off. Actually it's taken off some of the wood it looks like that was on, uh, on this. I might have mentioned belt sander, but I would not use a belt sander on this. Uh, it'd be too aggressive, it might change the shape or deform the shape. The rest of it's going to be a hand, by hand. Uh, one trick is glue a piece of uh, sandpaper onto a flat substrate like MDF, and, and you can use this to clean up the back side and the front side, all sides. It was the first one I. It was the first one of these I turned, and, and I really felt like it was too long, uh, so I used my um, Fibonacci uh, calipers. And if you're not familiar with this, I will have a link to a video here. Uh, but I use this as one reference, and then that lays out the other other reference. And I think this this uh, by cutting off of it, it, it does have a much better better proportion. This was a fun project, and I think it turned out well. I'm not sure what I use it for. It, it could be, could be a ring ring bowl. If you're interested in me uh, kicking this up a notch and doing a video on one with a with a using the same type of similar technique to a box, please leave it in the comments comments below. I'll have a couple of references in my show notes to this video that might be helpful uh, to links to the uh, South Auckland Woodturners Guild in New Zealand. They've got a couple of really good references for this. Show notes is where you go into the description of the video and go down below and you'll see the links there. I know I'm uh, including links to my Amazon store. Uh, people occasionally ask me, well, where's your Amazon store? We can't find it. Well, you go into show notes and, and, and click on the link. Y'all stay safe. Come on back here.